So I interviewed 30 of you and you told me what your pain points are around in public speaking. One of the top ones is imposter syndrome. And I actually, before I get into my tips today, I want to challenge you to do something. Your future version of you, who you're going to become in order to become managing director, senior counsel, COO, is going to demand a different version of you. It's going to demand a different version of you. So while we're sitting here talking about the how and talking about the tactical, I also want you to think about the choices that you need to make in order to become the person that is COO, CEO, managing director, or senior counsel. All right, so let's now get into the tips. Okay, so I interviewed 30 of you and I asked you, what are your top pain points when it comes to public speaking? And you told me what they are. So each day I'm gonna tackle one of them and give you some tips to hopefully manage it, overcome it, and maybe even excel beyond whatever that pain point is. So number one, the big one that I got is what to do when you've got imposter syndrome and here's the interesting fact about imposter syndrome it actually impacts high achievers high achieving women more often than you think I am a burning example of this I was at boxing this morning and I was boxing with my new trainer and my old trainer from a year ago happened to just sit nearby and was watching and as I was leaving my workout this morning with by the way my ass totally kicked he said to me wow, you're so much better. And I looked at my new trainer and I said, "Mm, I bet he would say not. He's like, she's all right. But the point is that my imposter syndrome kicked in. I've showed up every Wednesday and every Friday for a year. There's no way that I'm still where I was a year ago when I first started out with boxing. But there was a conflict. There was a conflict between what my self-perception is and what others see in me. So that is a definition of imposter syndrome. All right, now that we've defined it, I wanna share four ways that you can overcome it. Number one is to celebrate your wins. In other words, can you make an entire scrapbook of every time someone has written you a compliment, every time somebody has given you a high five, anytime anybody has said something that you have added value to their life or to the workplace, and put it all in a scrapbook, and anytime you feel that imposter syndrome kick in, you're able to look at that list of accomplishments and say, hmm, you know what? I actually am worthy of this promotion, or I actually am worthy of taking on this project right now. Celebrate your wins. And by the way, celebrate your wins because that is going to galvanize all the goodness that you need to realize that promotion or that next job or senior counsel or managing director, or whatever it is that you have on your vision board that you wanna achieve. So number one is to create a brag book, a list of your accomplishments, and look at that on a regular basis to diffuse any kind of imposter syndrome. Number two, Do something on the regular that gives you joy. I read a blog post by Charlie Bleeker this morning and Charlie Bleeker challenged himself to do one thing that gives him joy for 100 days. And you know what that thing was? Lip syncing. And he thought to himself, I'm never going to do a hundred days of lip syncing. And then it just nodded him and nodded him so much that he decided to do it. And for a hundred days, he lip synced to songs that he loved. And guess what the end result was? He didn't get a job. He didn't get a promotion. It didn't get, it didn't make him more money, but what it did was that it gave him immense joy. And he ended up feeling like he could just take over the whole world because he was so full, his cup was so full with something that just gave him pure joy and happiness. So if you think back to something that you did as a kid and you could do it for hours, you would lose track of time, but it gives you so much joy. Could you just schedule time to do that every single week? Mine used to be colored by numbers, but as adults, I think that we lose sight of what it is that gives us joy because we're constantly measuring what success means. It's the new car. It's what's in your bank balance. It's, you know, the job title that you have. But sometimes joy doesn't necessarily have to have any metrics associated with it. It's that feeling that you get inside. So how can you, number two, get in the habit of doing something on the regular that gives you tremendous joy? Number three, how to handle compliments. Now, an inconfident person would have taken that compliment that the old trainer gave me this morning and say, uh, psh, 
nah, you know, my game is still off, I'm missing shots, I'm not a good boxer. A confident person would say, wow, thank you for noticing that I've improved in the last year. I really love boxing. I've been showing up every Wednesday and Friday for the last year, and I'm pretty sure that I've gotten better. Don't deflect, don't diminish, don't diffuse the compliment, acknowledge it, and then follow up with something that you absolutely love about what it is that you got the compliment on. I'll give you another example. Someone says to you, hey, Joya, I really love your dress. Thank you. I got this from Rent the Runway. I really, really love the service. I love the dresses that I'm able to get every single week. Number four is to give that inner critic a name. I had Tracy Ward, who is a confidence coach, come and speak to my women's platform, and she used to have an inner critic, and she called her Nasty Nan. So anytime someone said, okay, Tracy, we're gonna give you an opportunity to speak in front of 16,000 people, and her inner critic would start to speak and say, oh, you, you can't do that, like you've never spoken in front of 16,000 people. The point of naming that voice is to gain some distance from it. Remember, your thoughts are not necessarily who you are. So what can you do to say, oh, here's Nasty Nan again telling me I can't do something. Give her a name, get some distance from it, learn to coexist with that voice, acknowledge it, and say, but you know what, I'm gonna do this anyway. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging my fear, but I'm gonna do this anyway. Just keep in mind that our brains as human beings were designed to keep us safe to keep us in our comfort zone. So the minute that we start to step out of it and do something that is contrary to what our comfort zone is, the alarm bells start to go off and that usually shows up as your inner critic or imposter syndrome. So that's tip number four is to name your inner critic and gain some distance from it. I have a little gift for you. I have created a little sheet that you can use to book your first speaking gig. I realize that maybe imposter syndrome is the first hurdle. The second hurdle is to getting really well seasoned as a speaker, and there's plenty of videos that I offer on that. But if you actually wanna book that first speaking gig so you have a benchmark of when you're gonna actually be better when you're showing up on stage, I've got a little tip sheet for you. If you go to the link that I've got right here down below my face, you can get a little tip sheet on how to book your first speaking gig. Sometimes booking that first gig is kind of that kick in the butt that you need to be able to overcome your imposter syndrome and be able to practice and become somebody who has command and authority over your room. So all you gotta do is click on that link down below, by the way, I'm also hosting a public speaking masterclass starting September 29th. And if you go to that freebie download, you'll be able to find out any of the details that you want on that class. Hey, subscribe to my channel. I drop videos maybe twice a week, usually on Tuesdays. All you gotta do is hit subscribe and you'll get a little bell notification every single time I upload a video.